Hey people. Charcoal King here. Ha <laughs> ha. Fish in the boat. This is what it's about right here. So we're gonna do some southern fried fish. I'm trying to land this fish with one arm and talking to you guys, but that's when you guys see the scenery. And look at this big bad boy, fried catfish. You guys see this? Here we go. Woo! That's right, fried catfish. Hey, we'll get home, clean these bad boys up, put them in some cornmeal mix, fry them in some oil. Oh, goody, stay tuned. Alright guys, welcome to the Charcoal King. As you guys can see during that video, I was super excited. I knew what I was doing that day. I was craving some fried catfish. I went out there, I targeted them. I knew exactly where I thought they could have been. That does not mean I could have caught them. There's a difference between catching and fishing. And it seems like I fish a lot more than I catch. So in the video, I knew I was on them. I was trying to video it for you guys. I just got excited. Enough of that. Let's get to the star of the show, the catfish. I've already cleaned them. Um, I've uh, soaked them in salt water, I've paddled, I've drained them, and I've let them sit in the refrigerator for a day with nothing on them, then I've paddled them dry. So here's our fish fillets. Now, how do we do it? Super, super, super easy with a kicker that I don't think a lot of people know about. If so, let me know, because my family definitely was like, who in the world does that? And I'm like, hey, that's the way. When you're out of something and you're craving something, the pantry is your world's greatest go-to. So this is what I do. You guys see these bags right here? I can't figure out which one I want. I like spicy. Man, that sounds good. A little bit additional lemon, but I love crispy. Well, for me, I buy all three. And then I put them in a big bag and then I can save it whenever I need it. You guys see I'm a little low and that's why we're doing this video. Well, one day I was super low on all this stuff and I had the hush puppy mix. Well, hush puppy mix is cornmeal. And I'm like, man, I wonder if that'd be good as like a, a breading for fish. Sure enough, I started adding about two cups to this to all three bags. My girls complained that the fish one time was a little spicy. So I took this and I added all this. So if you guys like it spicy, add two bags of this. You guys do whatever you want to do. I'm just showing you how we make it and how we go from a big platter of nothing but uh, fried fish to a platter of nothing at all, period. <laughs> all right, let's go over here on this little rant real quick. You guys just hear me rant over and over again about the importance of a thermometer. This is no exception. Once again, $10 thermometer, although it has a specific use, which I definitely don't make candy, this is an oil thermometer. You want a pan or a pot, anything big enough, you know, to be able to cook your, uh, your fry your stuff in. The kicker is you want some high walls. You definitely can cook it in a cast iron skillet, whether it be 10 inch or 12 inch. The only thing I don't like about it is if you overcrowd it, it seems like a lot of uh, splatter and stuff gets on your uh, stove top or your range and it just creates a mess. So I like something just a little bit higher walls. Now that doesn't mean you have to fill the whole thing up with oil, but let's say we're up. So we're preheating it. We're about 260 to 275. So we're well on our way. What temperature do you think we need? Microwave queen. I have no idea. Good. I'm glad you said that. 350. You're right. We're going to shoot for about 350, and all that's controlled by this right here. See, that's that's the kind of lesson I need is like how to work the stove. <laughs> well, imagine this as your gas. Imagine this as your throttle. <laughs> I'm kidding. They, if they're watching this video, they probably know more than I do. They know how to turn the stove on. I don't necessarily. They might know how to stir the stove on, but you don't want to crank it on high and start doing your fish. What? Just because somebody says preheat doesn't mean you have to put it on high. That's why cast iron is so unique because it's so thick and it absorbs so much energy, so much heat that you can preheat something on medium or medium low and let the cast iron be for what it is. It's thick. It's going to absorb the heat and that's what you want. But is this cast iron? This does not look like cast iron. Well, what is yes, this? it's enameled cast iron, which means it's just got a protective coating on the inside and outside. It's one of my go-to pans. I love it. 
Uh, we do a lot of stuff out of it. Some people call it cheap cast iron. I could care less. I love this pan. Can we get back to the fish? Yep. Thank you. 275 right now. Perfect. That's what you want. I mean, you want to go higher, but. All right. So let's get back to the fish. How are we going to bread our fish? I'm going to do a simple, easy way that I've uh, learned to do along the way. Um, there's about three ways to do your fish. Okay, so let's go over them. You can do a, a, a three-step method. You can do flour, your egg or milk station, and then your breading. You can cut the flour out and just do the, the egg wash mixture and then your breading. Or you can just go straight to breading and have like a, um, a thinner coating on your fish. Let's scratch all those three. I thought you said there's only three. There is, but there's a charcoal king way too. All right, so here's our fish. Like I said, I'm going to cut the big pieces because I like a little bit more breading. The bigger your fillets are, the less breading they have. So I kind of make them into, uh, what do you think? Like catfish nuggets per se, big chunks. Sometimes. Catfish tenders. Tenders, there you go. I can work with that. Sometimes they're just good the way they are. And all we're gonna do is add yellow mustard and some sour cream. Yeah, I said it. Yellow mustard and sour cream. If you haven't tried it, that's why we're doing this recipe. I don't I should start a cookbook. People are gonna start thinking I'm crazy. Like, where does this dude come up with it? Barbecue steaks. You also do mustard steaks, which are super good. Ah, don't Wait. give them all the secrets, honey. <laughs> they got to come back for more. All right. It doesn't really change the flavor of the fish at all. I'm telling you that right now. Um, one of my, I think one of my big pet peeves is you can add something to enhance flavor. You don't have to add something to change the flavor. Word of wisdom. All right. Oh, quote. Quote. That's a quote. All right. A little bit will do you. So we're going to do... Just a couple teaspoons of, or a couple tablespoons of mustard. I'd probably say that's what, probably two tablespoons of mustard. And all we're looking to do is coat the fish. We don't want a big heaping glob. That's probably about a quarter cup of sour cream. We're not looking to drown the fish. And this is not going to overpower the fish. You definitely can season your fish right now if you wanted to. I'm always just a big fan of seasoning the fish when they come out of the skip, uh, come out of the, the froth when they're. Uh, super hot and that oil absor absorbs that seasoning. But when everything you have is pre-seasoned, I don't season my fish when it comes out. I do the cheap method, I buy the stuff already done. You can definitely add your cornmeal, your flour, garlic pepper, paprika, red pepper. Heck, you can do anything you want to. But not until you try this recipe, because I'm telling you. You know what we should do? We should do before and after. Before and then after. What? Before, after. <laughs> Before, after. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So our fish is bathed in all that goodness. Are about 325, guys, we're getting close. All right, so what we're gonna do, we're ready to coat, we're ready to get this bad boy in the oil. So what do we do? Now that these are, whatever concoction you come up with, we're ready. I've got my concoction in here. This is a secret recipe handed down from about 600 years. You know who that's handed down from? That's handed down from Louisiana Fish Fry Products. If you tell them all my secrets. And Zatarans. Whatever it is, it's good. I can tell you that. House Autry. You name it. Whatever they had on the shelf, I bought. Oh, honey. A little mess here. Nothing I can't clean up with. All right. I do start with a little bit less, and you can always add if it gets gummy and stuff like that. So how do we bread them? Easy. Just toss it around. And there you go. I like to leave it in there. You can take it out. I just think it keeps absorbing more and more cornmeal. I'm kind of liking the mix. I don't necessarily like it super thin, and I don't necessarily like it super thick for my catfish or any fish that I fry. I think there's a a fine balance of tasting the fish and getting a good um, seasoning around the edges. You'll be surprised when you go around the country 
how many different ways there are to bread fish. You know, some people swear just by flour. Some people strictly cornmeal, but. Panko. Panko's a really good one. I'll tell you another, you know what we should do one day is English fish and chips. And we can do that with East Tennessee carp if you wanted to. But uh, that's super good. Um, that's a whole nother video right there. Just thank you, huh? thank you, wife. Now you just gave me another reason to go fishing. <laughs> like you need another reason to go fishing. <laughs> Fish in the boat. All right, we're not going to bore you with all the details. Basically, this is what you're looking for. Knock off the excess. There's a nice breaded piece of catfish nugget right there, okay? What we're going to do, we're going to bring these bad boys over. We're at 340, so we're pretty good. Give this a stir. Here's one of those kitchen gadgets that I would highly recommend. I love this bad boy. Everything from like picking bones out from a stock. Uh, it's great for fried foods. You guys can see right here, this got a couple more seconds to heat up. So let me just go on this right here. You notice there's no newspaper. There is paper towels, but it's only to catch the grease that falls from here. I don't like to put my fried foods on newspaper or paper towels. I think it creates a, a wet atmosphere for the food. And so if you work so hard to fry it the proper way, the last thing you want to do is sit in a pool of grease and all the paper towels and um, uh, newspaper. newspapers do is just catch the grease. Well, once they catch it, it's nowhere for it to go. So what we do, we put it in like in a colander or a strainer or anything to allow the grease to fall and it keeps your fried food um, crispy longer. And this, that's actually an air fryer basket, right? Oh that yeah. went to our... Went to our little toaster oven. Little toaster there. oven. And this thing's been used in more ways than it probably even thought of when they made it. So, all right, so here we go. Dust the flour off. Our oil is at 350. You don't want to crowd the pan. And here's a tip. When you put your food in, go away from you. If the oil splatters, it's going to splatter away from you. If you drop it in or come towards you, the momentum is going to bring it towards you. And that's also why we have higher walls. That's why I like uh, frying in something that's as... Um, tall as a Dutch oven. You don't want to overcrowd the pan. You want to keep your eye on the temperature. And this is one of the very few cooks that I can tell you that just keep an eye on your thermometer, okay? You don't want it to go too high and you don't, once you add the cold fish, you don't want it to drop too low. If it does, adjust your temperature. But be mindful, don't, don't leave it. Don't walk away from it. There you like go, I, walking away. I was going to wash my hands. The point is, <laughs> we're going to get these fried up. And when we come back, we're going to show you what the whole mess looks like. Stay tuned. All right, guys. So luckily enough, this is what happens. And this is why the thermometer is so important, okay? I just took my second batch out of the oven. We're not going to count how many pieces I put in there because okay. some of them... Out of the fryer. Out of the fryer, yeah. We took them out of the fryer. The point is, we're not going to count how many that uh, I put in or took out because some of them... Are already in your belly? Yes. Yes. All right. You guys see the temperature? Now we're hovering about 300. That's why it's important to get a thermometer or at least understand that when you fry, you're, you know, you're trying to target a certain temperature. So when you add your small batches of fish, it's going to drop the temperature of the oil. Just be patient. Now would be a good time to start your second batch. You don't have to bread all of them at once. You can start your second batch or third batch, whatever batch you're on. Get them coated, get them tossed and just give the, uh, um, the oil just a quick second to come back up to temperature before you start adding oil to a 300 degree um, pan. If you added your fish now and it was this low, you would probably hover around 245 to 250. The temperature would significantly drop. And that's how you get your soggy whatever you're frying. It doesn't matter if it's frozen french fries. It doesn't matter if it's fish, hush puppies, chicken patties, chicken nuggets. It does fish sticks. It does not matter. If your temperature drops below a certain degrees, that's how you're frying them proper, and that's how you get your soggy stuff. But this stuff, oh, that's the one I just pulled out. That's hot. Yeah. Give me a bite. Look at that. I mean, white, flaky goodness. You guys see that? Mm. Here. Maybe you didn't see it there, but maybe you can. Let me taste. I don't want to ruin the bite. No, we're making you something else. Oh, you don't even want to tell them that, do you? <laughs> I don't like fried fish. I want salmon. <laughs> salmon. 
salmon for the microwave queen. I might as well just put it in the microwave for her. <laughs> we're blocking that. That's gonna be the video right there. All right, enough of that. So we're creeping back up. We're getting close. I'm gonna turn the temperature up just a little bit to help us out. And then like I said, when we get back, all this fish is gonna be fried and we're gonna switch the gears to basically, it could be a star of the show if we wanted it to, the hush puppy mix. Mm. Let's get back to like the, the main side, hush puppies. How do we wanna make it better? Hush puppy mix. Yes, you can buy it at the grocery store just like I do. But do you add jalapenos? Do you add cheddar cheese? Do you add a little bit of sugar? Mm, man, they get fluffy and then you can like drizzle honey over top of them. Let's see how we make it. All right, let's do, uh, let's do one cup of mix. Who knew this stuff was so versatile? My dad thought I was crazy when I said I added hush puppy mix to my fish fry mix. But sometimes when you're out of fish fry mix, you gotta do something. All right, so there's, let's see, there's one cup of that. Everything just goes in a bowl and you just, uh, don't add any juice. I don't like adding the juice. Let's say one tablespoon of jalapenos. That depends on how spicy you want it. You can always add some hot sauce. Use about a half a cup of milk. That was three quarters. Just eyeballed a little bit. Hey, watch this guys, look at this right here. So there's been a couple of videos about our garden. We save the eggshells. And once our carton of eggs are done, we just go outside and crumble them up and put it in our garden for fertilizer. Pretty neat if you ask me. And it's, we've already bought it, so why not? All right, so one egg. Let these bad boys dry a little bit. We're gonna do, uh, let's say, one and a half tablespoons of sugar. And I'm gonna eyeball this. You don't want too much. I'll say about a quarter cup of shredded cheese. These are big chunks. These are right off the block, that Sargento. So you can get the finely shredded if you wanted to. And we mix. See if we can get the consistency we're looking for. It's supposed to be pretty thick. Obviously, you don't want to dump just uh, straight liquid like pancake batter in there. We're not making funnel cakes. And the key to this is making it while you're getting your other ingredients together, like your uh, your fish, you know, stuff like that, because you want this to uh, set up. You want that uh, cornmeal mix to be able to absorb the liquid. We got our last batch done. It's about half the portion it was when we first started. You guys see how just crispy and crunchy and everything's nice and golden brown. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. But let, let's move on. Let's keep let's keep this film going. Let's keep it going. Hush puppy mix. You gotta notice early in the video, I wanted to get it done early because you see how much it's tightened up now. It's the the uh, you see the air pockets in there. That's how you make your light and fluffy um, hush puppies. But what we want to do now is basically the same thing. You definitely don't want to overcrowd your pan. I'm going to use a two, uh, two tablespoon scoop. It's like our cookie scoop. And uh, what happens is we're going to dip it in oil, dip it in here. It's going to help release. And so it's not going to get gummy. Drop them in really close. You don't want to drop them all up high because you don't want it to splatter. And the same thing goes. Keep a good eye on your temperature. Don't be scared to adjust your knob and let them fry, okay? These things will explode in size too, so definitely don't think that you can just overcrowd it. Right, dip them in the oil. Let's see your scoop. See that? Dip it in oil. So we'll run two batches out of this. There we go. Uh, oh, now I have a better angle and now you're dead. Oh, well, that's life. All right, so you can see, look, 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 look. See how they're floating up already? So the bottoms are gonna cook. You're gonna have to manually, forcefully flip them, okay? So you can see how bigger they're getting right now. 
And there's not really a, um, I would say hush puppies are a very tough item to cook uh, because it, it's not like a fish. They're not going to be done super fast in the middle. It's like a donut. You just got to know when they're done. Don't be scared to cook them just a couple more minutes if you had to. See our temperature is hovering about right there. That's probably the difference of lukewarm ingredients versus cold fish going in. And that's why we set our meat out uh, when we cook our meat, whether it be on the grill or in the pan. You know, we've done a lot of fish lately. We've done lobster, no, we did scallops. I stuffed the lobster, we didn't make a video. We did shrimp boil, went all over it. All right, we'll turn the heat up just a little bit because we're losing a little bit of temperature. Now we're hovering about 335 to 330. So we're gonna raise it up just a little bit and let these bad boys just go as they please. Turn them, bouncing them, bobbing them, weaving them. All right, we're gonna get these batch done. We're gonna put the other batch in and then the moment of truth. The what? The bite. bite. <laughs> Can't wait. I love these hush puppies. Hey, do you guys like hush puppies with honey? Yes. I love mine with cocktail sauce. Hot sauce and cocktail sauce. Honey. Honey no, is the okay. only way. A little spice, a little heat. Honey, maybe a little dusting of powder sugar. Ooh. We're not making beignets. Well, I would say that the easiest way to test to see if one's done is unfortunately you got to open it up. I don't even think adding a toothpick because at this point it's either going to be close to being done or it is done. There's no like just completely runny raw dough, you know? So at this point it's all about this. That's why I like that skimmer. Clean the oil up so it's not sitting there just burning everything. Keep your oil fresher longer. Mm. Good little big puppies. That's why they call them hush puppies. Because once you eat them, you can't talk. Ha! <laughs> you, you, you just made that up? You just made that up. <laughs> Let's see. What temperature we at? All right, we climb back up there. That's going to be good for us. Oil. You could definitely just use a tablespoon and make dollops. They don't have to be perfect. I just like this because it's uniform. They cook, they're all going to cook about the same time. They're all going to look pretty much even. There's no reason for it except just pretty consistent. You know how many goes in there? All right, guys, here we go. So everything's been cooked. We're ready to go. We got the fish. All mounded up, piled high. We got these crunchy, big old thick. Mm. Look at those jalapenos in there. I wonder if we can get one with some cheese in it. I see some cheese on the exterior. Oh, yeah. Look at that bad boy. Mm, give me that. Oh, one. yeah. No, 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 no. No, no. Let's bite this one. Let's bite. I, like, I love cocktail sauce. It's got a little hot sauce in there, too. Mm. You can hear it crunch. It's like a man's donut. A man donut. <laughs> yeah, like forget all the sweetness, frou frou. This bad boy right here will set you back at least a couple of years. Mmm. <laughs> the fish. Golly. I gotta tell you what. If I was you guys, I wouldn't try any of my recipes. They're horrendous. <laughs> this is all. This is all for, for a video and giggles. But who? I mean, of course this looks horrible. Lightly brown, golden, delicious. Fresh catfish, just from 15 minutes down the road. I know exactly where it came from. A breading that's light and crispy. Dip it in some fresh, cold. Oh, it just breaks apart. I mean, it's so light. It's not bogged down by dang breading. Mm. Dipping, I love tar sauce too. Mm. I love both of them. I wouldn't do it. Don't tell your friends. Don't tell your family. Just the fact, look, just, just watch this. Just, I wouldn't tell anybody. Matter of fact, I'll make it at home and then send pictures to all your friends and say, look what I'm having for dinner. 
Mm. I can't wait. It's chow time. Crack open a beer. Mm. We're good to go. All right, guys. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to press that subscribe button. I'm getting better at it. Pram that notification button, and we'll see you next time. Peace. Do what to that notification? Pound that notification button. That's that better? Right. That's better. How I'm gonna do these hush puppies. Mm. Mm, look at all this. Look at that. Mm. God, it's so good.